Hi, everybody. My name is Dave Keenan, and I'm a King County Superior Court judge. I'm here to talk about uh, jury selection. And this is part two of a four part series uh, covering many of the things you need to know concerning remote civil jury trials, or what we sometimes call Zoom trials or virtual trials. Hopefully, you've already watched part one, uh, where you heard from our hardworking civil chief, Judge Cahan, and my awesome colleague, the Honorable Nicole Gaines Phelps. Uh, where she talked about pretrial. And hopefully, if you haven't already, after watching this, you'll watch uh, parts three and four uh, covering jury management and trial with the wonderful Judge Matt Williams. So, here's what we're going to talk about today the general sequence and timing of the jury selection process in a remote context how to help the court prepare the electronic questionnaire to be sent to prospective jurors, how the court is going to address juror technology access and juror hardships, how the court will screen prospective jurors for health concerns, how the court will provide the, the parties to a case with the questionnaire responses from prospective jurors, uh, how the court is going to handle live questioning of the prospective jurors during the jury selection process or what lawyers sometimes call voir dire, and how the court will handle challenges for cause, uh, GR 37 challenges, Batson challenges, peremptory challenges, really anything uh, where the court would need to take something up outside of the presence of the other jurors. So here's what we'll, uh, so keep in mind that hopefully uh, we'll resume in-person civil jury trials at some point. Uh, but even then, if we get to that point, we will still probably be picking juries remotely. And that was the case throughout parts of the summer and fall of 2020 when we were picking jurors remotely using Zoom, but holding them uh, in uh, person at uh, Maidenbauer Center. We can't say at this moment what the future holds, what things will be like when you're potentially watching this video. Uh, but keep in mind, you should always check with the judge and staff in the department where your case is heard uh, regarding their specific procedures. So regarding initial jury selection, uh, this is going to take place using an electronic questionnaire. Uh, bear in mind that there is a lot going on behind the scenes. Uh, so you're going to be getting some correspondence from the court, probably the court's uh, bailiff. Uh, but behind the scenes, the court, uh, the judge, the bailiff, they're working with jury services, looking at spreadsheets, getting lists of prospective jurors and corresponding a lot with those prospective jurors. There are a lot of advantages to remote jury selection. You might actually end up with more information concerning prospective jurors during this remote process than you would have in the past with uh, an in-person process. So some key things that the judge will cover uh, in this questionnaire is really it deals a lot with technology access. The court is going to ask prospective jurors about their access to a device like a tablet or a personal computer. In other words, does the juror have something they can see and hear the court and the parties and the witnesses and the evidence on? And through which the court and the parties can see that. And the court will ask prospective jurors about their internet access. In other words, does the juror have reliable internet in order to stay connected and observe and be observed during the jury selection process and the trial? And if the juror does not have adequate uh, access, does not have internet or device uh, or both, the court may be able to arrange for access, for example, through a site, either the King County Superior Courthouse in Seattle or the Mailing Regional Justice Center in Kent. There may be other options for prospective jurors with access issues and your particular judge will know what those options are. The court might also include case specific uh, questions uh, in the questionnaire. For example, you might want to know if a prospective juror has been party to a particular lawsuit before or has been uh, employed in a particular area or has education in a particular area. Whatever questions you may have specific to the case, you would propose those to your judge, uh, just like you would uh, in an in person trial. Again, the difference here is that the court might put those questions in an electronic questionnaire email to jurors rather than asking them in person in the courtroom. And the court is also going to ask jurors during that questionnaire process about their hardship requests, again, just as if uh, they were in person uh, with the court. So the court might also be screening for uh, health 
so this is an example of a questionnaire that we've been using for a while now where uh, jurors are asked about, for example, their potential exposure to coronavirus and whether or not they've had uh, COVID-19. Uh, so the court is going to ask about those questions and that's going to apply, frankly, whether the jurors are reporting uh, in person or even if they're uh, reporting over Zoom. It, it, it matters both ways. The court is going to download the juror questionnaire responses and they might provide you with that relevant information in advance. So the, right now the court is using Microsoft Forms to send out electronic questionnaires. The jurors get a link. They fill out the questions on that questionnaire after you've given the court some input on what the questionnaire would, would say. And then the court downloads those responses, for example, in a, into an Excel spreadsheet. The court is going to scrub that information and will likely get it to you uh, in some form. This is just a screenshot of what those responses might look like to the court when the court downloads them. What you receive from the court may be a little bit different, uh, but at a minimum, you should expect that there'll be identifying information so that you'll know the juror number. Uh, and again, I think what we found and what many of the lawyers have found is you end up getting more information about prospective jurors and even having a little bit more time uh, with that information uh, than you might have otherwise had uh, without an in-person trial. Now the court may schedule Zoom panels for live questioning of prospective jurors, typically around 18 per panel. Now recall, if you would have picked a jury in, uh, before in person, you'd have as many as 50 people in a room and everybody would be questioned all at once. So what we found is that 50 people is really too many to keep track of on a screen at one time. 18 seems to be a good number, but your judge may prefer a different number. And you should talk with your judge about your preferences. You'll be given some time to question jurors and panel. The time each panel takes is going to vary uh, depending on the nature of the case and what the parties request and what the court decides. Uh, I can tell you anecdotally, I've found that juries that I've picked, uh, a single panel takes maybe 75 to 90 minutes. And we think that you'll find that questioning jurors in panels like this can work quite well. The jurors are often in a space where they feel comfortable sharing, which can aid the parties in the jury selection process. And you're able to see the jurors' faces, their expressions on the screen in front of you. So whatever you think you might have lost by way of not being able to observe body language and purpose, uh, or in person rather, you probably gain uh, by having them on a screen. So procedurally, uh, Zoom jury selection is very similar to in-person jury selection. Uh, again, you're going to want to ch uh, check with your particular judge about how things uh, will work uh, in jury selection in your case. Check with your judge first concerning their preferences. Uh, let them know what your preferences are. But just like with an in-person jury selection, uh, you may need to raise your challenges for cause as you develop them. For example, a prospective juror on Zoom says that they cannot be fair and impartial. You might need to challenge that juror for cause, and typically you'd be challenging that juror for cause right there on Zoom. So again, you should check with your judge regarding their preferences. Relatedly, if you have a challenge under General Rule 37, where you believe a potential juror is being unfairly excluded based on race or ethnicity, or perhaps a bat Batson challenge based, for example, on gender, or just again, any other matter that you need to take up outside of the presence of the prospective jurors, you should alert the court and the court will take appropriate steps, which might include, for example, put, putting the jurors in uh, a breakout room. That might also be the case if, for example, a juror wishes to be questioned on a sensitive topic outside of the presence of the other jurors, the court is going to know where to put those jurors, whether it's in the waiting room or in all likelihood in a Zoom breakout room. And then finally, you'll have peremptory challenges just as you would with an in-person jury selection where you'll have the opportunity to challenge jurors and remove a certain number of jurors without giving any reason at all. And the procedures for that are gonna vary from judge to judge. The judge might give you, for example, a seating chart showing you who's left in the jury box and who's in the gallery and which seats are designated as alternates uh, if you pick those uh, in advance. So that's the end of part two of this four-part uh, training concerning remote 
civil jury trials. Hopefully you've already walked, watched part one with uh, Judge Cahan and Judge Phelps, and hopefully if you haven't already, next you'll watch parts three and four with Judge Williams. Thank you, and please let us know how we can help.